Hello my friends and welcome to my channel. One of the most popular and most common musical ensembles is a choir. Every small town church, every high school has at least one choir. Choirs are so much fun. Not only is the music enjoyable, but there's a real sense of community within the choir. I'm fortunate to have been in a choir every single year since I was eight years old, and now I'm a professional choral singer in the city of Toronto. I currently sing with the Tafel Music Baroque Chamber Ensemble and I'm the baritone section leader at Metropolitan United Church. I love choirs so much that when the pandemic hit the world, I started making virtual choirs for this very YouTube channel. Needless to say, I know a lot about choirs, and in this video, I'm gonna be sharing everything that you need to know to nail your choir audition. Not all choirs have auditions, and not all auditions are the same, but what I've done is compiled everything I know about choral auditions into one video, so you're prepared for any type of situation. We're gonna break this video down into three sections, how to prepare before your audition, what to do the day of your audition, and what to do during your audition. I'm going to be going over things like audition requirements, how to sight read, and how to deal with nerves. Thank you to my patrons on Patreon who are sponsoring this video. If you wanna become a patron, click the link in the description. Let's get started. Step number one, preparation before the audition. As I said, every audition is going to be different, so the preparation may vary. My very first tip is to read the description. I can't tell you how many audition situations I've been in where people don't read the requirements. Oftentimes the ensemble or the group that you're auditioning for will have an information packet and what they'll do is they'll post it on their website or they'll send it in an email. This packet is going to contain all of the information you need to know about the audition. It's going to tell you what you need to prepare, what you need to wear, where you need to go, and basically all of the information you could possibly know, it's gonna be in this packet. If there isn't one, then you have to email the organization and ask. You also need to read any emails that you receive from them. If you get a live audition, they're going to send you an email of the time and location of your audition, and they might send some additional information that pertains just to you. Once you carefully read the audition requirements, it's time to get to work. Let's say you need to be prepared to do this in your audition. Sing one song in English, sing one song in a language other than English, sight sing one four measure line, and sight sing one excerpt from a popular choral piece. You likely won't be doing all four of these things, you'll likely do some combination of two of them. Okay, let's start with the songs. Let's figure out how you can prepare these songs for your audition. Practice makes perfect. Well, practice is a good thing, but the song will never be perfect. What you need to strive for is a polished performance. So maybe we can change it to practice makes polished. Choosing a song is going to be step one. Unless the group sends out a list of songs that you need to choose from, my advice is to choose A, a song that you like, and B, a song that shows off what you're good at. If you choose a song that you like, it's going to show in your performance. I find this is a really easy way to show your love of music. And if you're spending all this time preparing for the audition and actually doing the audition, if you choose songs that you love, the whole process is gonna be so much more enjoyable. You also wanna pick a song that shows off what you're good at. In auditions, oftentimes there's a time crunch. There's never enough time, they're usually running late, so you don't have much time to show what you're capable of. For example, if you're really good at singing long, sustained notes, then maybe you wanna pick a slow song. And if you have a really good ability to belt out those high notes, pick a song with a lot of high notes. Finally, choose songs that you're comfortable with. What you don't want to do is pick a song the night before and rush your preparation. It can be a new song if you like, but make sure that you give yourself enough time to prepare so you can make sure that it's really polished and well done. Okay, so we've chosen our song and now we need to practice. Here are a few quick tips to practice and learn music. One way that I learn music is by listening to others. Now, I don't wanna copy what they do, but I want to learn from them. YouTube is a fantastic resource for finding a wide range of examples. Another great way to learn music is to separate the words and the music. So take a piece of paper, write down the words, and read them out loud. This is going to help you memorize the piece, but it's also going to help you comprehend what the words actually mean. One fantastic way to learn music from a technique standpoint is to sing the entire song on a lip trill. This is going to help you stay connected to your breath throughout the entire song. Remember, we wanna show the audition panel a polished performance. You may be a new singer. Maybe you've never sung in your life and this is your very first audition. That's completely okay. 
But if you're as prepared as you possibly can be, it's going to show the panel that you mean business and that you're willing to put in the work. And that type of person is someone they desperately want in their ensemble. So we've done the songs. Now, how do we prepare for sight singing? I know this can be a pretty scary topic for a lot of people. Sight singing is hard enough, but when you're doing it in front of people, it can be so nerve wracking. As I said, this might not be a portion of your audition, but it's best to be prepared. My advice is going to vary depending on your experience level. If you can't read music, my advice is to learn the note names and what they sound like. There are thousands of videos online that can help you do this. There are free courses, paid courses on platforms like Skillshare, eBooks, YouTube videos. There are a ton of resources for you. I recommend you start with the free ones. But I guess my general advice is to practice a little bit every single day. The more experience you have, the better you get. One way to practice is to find a line of music or find some sheet music online, play the starting note, play the chord, and then just go. What's also really helpful is sight reading with other voices. One way that I do this is I find a choral piece I've never done before. I find the sheet music, I go on YouTube and look up a good quality recording, and then I sing along with it. For example, let's say there is a choral arrangement of Amazing Grace that I've never sung before. I have the sheet music, but I wanna see how my sight reading is. There are two ways that I can do this. I could just play my starting note and play the chord and then sight read along, or I can find a recording online and sing along with the recording. This is the kind of practice that you can do to really improve your sight singing, but you have to hold yourself accountable and try not to cheat. Remember this, growth in music and in singing is consistency over time. Step two, the day of the audition. It's the big day and you're probably feeling nervous. This is completely normal. Everyone gets nervous. And the way I look at it is it shows that you care. Here's my biggest piece of advice. And I learned this the hard way. Don't completely change your routine just because it's an important day. On big performance days, sometimes we feel the need to get up at 5 a.m., go to the gym, drink four liters of water, and do all these things that we don't normally do. Find your routine as you lead up to audition day, not the morning of. The first thing that I would do is review the materials. This is where you're going to read the audition requirements again. So we did this before the audition, but the day of, let's just read it again just to ease our minds. Double check that you're meeting all of the requirements, you're going to the right place and at the right time. You wanna focus on the audition. You don't wanna to have to worry about all this extra stuff that's happening. The next thing I would do is a thorough warm up. To learn how to do a proper warm up, check out some of my other videos, which I'll link in the description below. But for now, remember this, body, breath, voice. That's the order in which you should warm up. Start by doing a body warm up. This can mean many different things. Go for a walk, go for a swim, do some yoga, take your dog for a walk, even do some household chores. That's gonna warm up your body. If your body's feeling flexible and it's feeling warm, then you're ready to go. Next is breath. And all you have to do here is take a few slow, healthy breaths. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Slow breathing is going to get your breath ready to sing, but it's also going to help calm your nerves. Finally, warm up your voice. And I always recommend doing lip trills in your warm up. <laughs> lip trills are going to ensure that you're singing with proper support. If you don't know how to do lip trills, I explain how to do them in this video and the link will be in the description. Now your body, breath, and voice are all warmed up. So now it's time to practice your song. What I like to do at this stage of the preparation is a mock audition. You want to pretend that it's the real thing so you can get into the mindset. If you can do this in front of a mirror, even better because you get to watch yourself perform. And if you want to, you can spend a few minutes going over your sight singing. Gather your things, make sure you've got everything that you need, and then you're set to go. Step three, during your audition. Okay, so you're just about to walk into the room. Do a few slow breaths just to calm yourself down. Before you walk in, I want you to know one thing. You cannot undo the work that you've put into this. This has been the single greatest piece of advice that I've ever been given. In these stressful situations, we have a habit of doubting ourselves, of feeling like an imposter or that we don't deserve to be there. This is false. You've put in the work and you deserve to be there. When you're in the room, just be yourself and know that the audition panel, which might just be one person, the music director, they want you to succeed. Nobody is here looking for you to fail. So please try to have some fun. 
You'll likely get the option to do sight singing or the songs first. I personally prefer to do the sight singing first to get it out of the way. What's gonna happen is someone's going to play the starting note and probably the opening chord. So you really wanna lock in the key signature in your head. This is where you take your time and sight read in your head. I've been in this situation many, many times and it feels like time is going so, so, so fast, but you have the time, just slow it down. You're sight singing the pitches and the rhythm, so the tempo doesn't really matter. So take a slow tempo. One, two, three, four. If you make a mistake, don't panic and just try your best to get back on track. The same rules apply if you're singing an excerpt from a choral piece. Take your time and pick a slow tempo. In some instances, a pianist might actually be playing along with you as you do this, but you can still take your time. It's still your audition and the pianist will follow your tempo. Now onto the song portion. There are three possible scenarios when it comes to the accompaniment of the piece. So you might do it a cappella, so no accompaniment. You might do it with the pianist or you might do it with an accompaniment track. If it's the first two, then you're in complete control of the tempo. Do whatever feels right for you. If it's an accompaniment track, you don't have that freedom. However, if it is a track, then the organization will have sent that out to you before, so you're used to the tempo and you've been practicing with it. One extremely important thing to know, if you're working with a pianist, if there is an accompanist that's playing for you, you need to provide them with clean and clear sheet music. So what you need to do beforehand is if you have the sheet music, you need to make sure any unnecessary markings are erased. You need to make sure that certain things are highlighted. If you're gonna take time in a certain place, if there's a complete stop where you're gonna pause, that needs to be marked in your score. Everything that you do has to be on the page to make it as clear as possible for the pianist. So we're not talking about an old photocopied gross mess. It needs to be clean, it needs to be clear. Also, I know pianists hate this, so do not laminate your sheet music. So don't put it in a plastic sheet. That's not gonna help them. What's gonna happen is the light is going to reflect on the plastic and they won't be able to read it. One other tip when working with a pianist is if you're handing them sheet music, it doesn't hurt to just go up to them and tell them your tempo, tell them a few things that maybe you want to happen in the piece, as long as you don't turn your back to the audition panel. Nobody wants to see your back. So just position yourself so you can give the sheet music to the pianist, tell them what you need to happen, tell them what you would like to happen, and then go from there. Now that you're singing, it's your time to shine. Sing, perform, enjoy yourself. Trust the process and trust all of the amazing work that you put into this audition. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, thoughts, or concerns, leave them in the comments below. And if this video helped you with your audition, I would love to hear about it. Send me a direct message on Instagram, comment below. I would love to hear your stories. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy singing.